Hi, I'm Alex Turchin from Open Longevity, and this is Ben Gerzel from Singularity Net, Open Cog, and Hans uh, Robotics. Hans yeah. Robotics. Yeah. yeah. The, my first question is about what do you think how works in AI will help to extend human life? Uh, I, I think that solving molecular biology and understanding the whole complex system of the human body is really hard and it involves integrating huge amounts of data of many different types and integrating different simulation models of different levels about and I doubt that the human mind can solve that as rapidly as an appropriately designed AI system can. Now what whether you need AI to get to the Methuselahity and achieve longevity escape velocity isn't obvious because of course humans can discover something and some human may discover a therapy that will increase the maximum lifespan to 150 and during that time some human may discover something else. So I wouldn't say AI is necessary. On the other hand, clearly an appropriately designed AI could massively accelerate the degree to which we understand how all the different systems in the human body we don't know what we need because we haven't discovered the secret yet right so it may be you don't need ai at all yeah. you just need some clever human biologist to discover a few things it may be that narrow ai tools utilized by smart human biologists yeah. will provide us with the secret or it may be that the problem is hard enough we need a generally intelligent non-human mind to integrate all the data about all the different subsystems in, in, in the human body, right? We, we, we really don't know. And, and, and maybe you can get a certain distance with smart humans, a certain distance further with humans using narrow AI tools, and then to get a really full understanding of how the human body operates and, and degenerates, you, you, you need an, an AGI, right? But, but we, we, re we really don't know. But my, my guess, if you just look at the complexity of all the different systems of the human body and how they interoperate, you at least need something between a narrow AI and, 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 and an AGI. Because, yeah, to really solve aging. On, on the other hand, to get to longevity escape velocity, who knows, right? A, luck, a lucky break could do that. But do you escape AGI in the next 12 years or no? So what is your time expectation for? Well, again, so on a purely yeah. rational basis, the confidence interval is pretty wide, right? So I've yes. said, like, in the next two to 100 years, we're going to get there, right? <laughs> which, which is a trivially small interval in the scope of human history. But on our life, it's quite large. So if we per want to, so. to solve aging before... I mean, my, my hope yeah. and my gut feeling is that we're going to get there in the next 10 years. And two or three years seems improbable. Could happen with the right Manhattan Project type initiative, which seems not to be what's going on. But 10 years seems quite feasible to me. Uh, but that's, again, that's intuition guided by my knowledge of the specific AI projects I'm working on, which I have a lot of optimism for. If you take a step back and look at it sort of from a grand historical perspective, you know, then any one project or paradigm isn't that important. You just look at the overall arc of progress and it's clear like we're almost surely decades and not centuries away, right? In, in, unless, I mean, there's a small chance we're just missing something fundamental about mind and universe, but I, 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 I doubt it. It doesn't seem that way. Okay, my next question is about AI nanny. You suggested the idea that humans could create AI nanny to uh, help uh, the save singularity or something like this, like 10 years ago. We wrote yeah. Article. Do you still share this idea? Do you still think we should create AI nanny? I think that what I called an AI nanny is probably the best outcome humanity can hope for. And whether human beings create that, or it sort of, an AI creates it, or it emerges out of the combination of some other systems, 
created originally for other purposes is a, is a different question. So what, what, what I would like to see happen and what I'm working to make happen is A, we create superhuman AGIs, much smarter than people, and with a benevolent attitude toward people. B, we use AIs to cure aging and also enable people to cure their psychological problems to the extent, to the extent that they wish to. And then each human being has two non-exclusive options. One option is mind upload yourself into the superhuman AI mind matrix, at which point you may lose yourself in the, the narrow sense, but gain all sorts of other things. Another is to remain in a basically legacy human form with whatever upgrades you, you chose. Now, if a lot of people chose to remain in a legacy human form, you will have the familiar problems of human society, but with new tools available, like AGIs to talk to, probably, you know, Drexlerian molecular nanoassemblers or femtoassemblers that, that the AIs have created, synthetic biology tools, and with all these tools and a bunch of people with legacy human brains and motivational systems, you're going to have more potential for nasty stuff happening than we have now. Probably people aren't going to manage that very well. So what, what you would hope is the AI nanny will not really be like an oppressive nanny who's hitting you over the head saying, don't do this, don't do this. What you'd imagine is a security system that operates in the background. You never even know it. it's there. 99. It may be here already. You never know it's there 99.99% of the time. But if someone goes psycho and starts building a, you know, a malevolent microorganism to release in the water supply, all of a sudden, like the water system in that house stops uh, running, yeah. right? Yeah, and you, you, you find that that infection isn't happening. So I, I think you wouldn't want an AI nanny to interfere with humans' ability to be human. But in, in the end, as you get more and more advanced technologies, the ability for a small number of people with a smaller and smaller amount of intelligence to do more and more damage is, is pretty palpable. And it seems to be beyond human capability to control these dangers. But what should be the intelligence level of AI nanny? Is it should be above human, human level or strongly above human? I don't think it has to be that strongly above human level in general. I think it will suffice to be roughly human level in general intelligence and strongly above human level at some particular types of pattern recognition, right? Which is sort of what I think you need to solve molecular biology and aging also. Like, at average types of general intelligence, it doesn't have to be massively superhuman, but it's got to be really, really good at connecting together different biology simulations and doing, like, scalable bio data analysis. So I think there's going to be some interesting cross-connection of different AI algorithms, right? Like, once, once you have one AI that can do basic human common sense stuff, and you have another AI that's really good at crunching bio data, another AI that's really good at crunching surveillance camera data and doing chemical analysis, if these are written in a way that they can be connected together effectively, right, then you're going to get some interesting systems that are human level in some ways and transhuman in other particular ways that are needed to do what they're doing. And, and the motivational system of these AIs need not be human-like, right? So you, you could have an AI that has human-level general intelligence, but all it cares about is analyzing biology data. All it cares about is keeping people safe. I mean, we've evolved with a certain motivational system for evolutionary reasons, but there's no, there's no reason a system with our level of general intelligence has to have all the particular pluses and minuses of our motivational system. But maybe human upload becomes such AI, uh, many AI or not? What do you think? I doubt it, because uh, humans are just not that good at the types of pattern recognition that this system so needs to do. Upgraded upload. <laughs> yeah, but you, but if you like human short-term memory, memory capacity yeah. seven plus or minus two, that's probably not good enough to identify really complex problems ha happening happening in the world. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of doubting it. I think, I mean, you know how in, in biology, changing just one parameter of an animal often won't work. Like if, if you tried to make a horse 20 times as big as a, as a regular horse, 
it won't work because the relations between you know mass, volume, surface area, and so on. The horse would collapse. It's like its legs would break, right? So in in the same way, I think the different pieces of a human mind they're tuned to work together by evolution. You can't just take a human mind and say, well, we'll expand the short-term memory capacity to a hundred thousand, and then it still works like a human mind. You're going to have to change this, 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 this to coordinate it all, and then it's not going to be human anymore. Yeah. Okay, the last question. What do you think could see, could be connected with human cognition somehow? So What can be connected with human cognition? So people, maybe the person may be able to envision future and, uh, and get information about possible ways to solve the problem, and it helps him. What well, can be quite interesting, I mean, the whole path of brain-computer interfacing between people and between people and AIs, yes. it will be very, very valuable. The, the, the question is, once you go down that road, will you want to cut it off? Because like, if you could connect your mind very closely with other people's and connect your mind very closely with AI minds, it's not that big a step to just become a Borg mind of, of, of some sort. So you'll have to make a conscious decision to like interact only this much rather than as much as the technology will allow you to do. And it's, it's not clear what, what, will hap what will happen there. I mean, it, it might be that it bifurcates and you just get some people who want to just go Borg and other people who, who want to be old-fashioned. Or you might find some natural intermediate level of, of, of connectivity. It, it's not that obvious because if Let's say you could access Google, you can access a calculator, you can access MATLAB, right? You, you, you can access, you know, a meditation guru program that, that helps you bliss out. You can, you can share thoughts with your friends and your wife and your kids. And so you can do all that. How much does your mind adapt to not become an isolated individual? And how much does your mind adapt just to become a component of this distributed system and once you've become that like why don't you jack up the bandwidth there right so it's it'll be very interesting to see how how that how that evolves i mean i'll i'll i'll, I'll take the brain computer interface and try it out i mean you can test it first right? yeah, we'll try. okay thank uh, you very much ben uh, this was open yeah. sure. thank you all right thank you